Good evening, everybody. So glad that you were able to come be with us in the house of the Lord tonight to worship with us and to just make ready for whatever the Lord has in store. We do want to have a time of, of giving and worship this evening, so if ushers, if you could go ahead and prepare, uh, and if you would go ahead and prepare whatever God has laid on your heart to give, say this, say, say God did it. Say that again, say God did it. See, some of you have a job that you know you're not even qualified for. I have a job that if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I wouldn't have the house that I have. I wouldn't be blessed like I am. God did it. And God did it because he knows I'm faithful. God did it because I have been through the fire and finances and he knows that I'm ready to be refined now. God did it. So in your own situation, whatever you're going through tonight, be refined. If you're going through a fire, recognize that it's just a piece of your story. And recognize that God is doing it. And he's doing it on your behalf. So sow into his kingdom tonight. Sow into an opportunity to spread hope and love to a world that needs to know who Jesus is and who he is to them. So God, come and do it again. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come into your house to worship you, to love on you and to just sit back and be ready for whatever you want to do. We ask that you open up the floodgates of heaven and pour into this place tonight something new, something refreshing. God, strike us right in the middle of our situation and have your complete blessed way. We trust you tonight. We trust you completely, and we worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. We call on the name of Jesus right now for every situation in this house that you just have your way. We ask that you touch these gifts tonight and that you multiply them to benefit your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would stand with us tonight and let's just enter into worship. Tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me
You know what? We may not get past this song tonight because some of us just need to know that we are his and he is mine. We have had a time this week. We have had a time worshiping a proven God. We have had a time him correcting our vision. And tonight is a night for something new. But in order for us to get to that, you need to recognize tonight, I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. Hallelujah. You just need to push your fear aside tonight and worship the King of Kings in this house. He has shown up for you tonight. Whatever you have need of, open up your mouth. Just put your hands up in this place tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We worship you. We lift our voices tonight and magnify you. We honor you. We exalt you. We adore you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. Tonight we open up our mouth and we give you a true worship. We give you a mighty praise. Because you are worthy of it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah much louder, louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's get our war fight on. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. And here it comes, church. Heaven comes to fight for me. Say, I'm going to see. I'm going to see. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. With everything inside of me, with everything inside of me, oh yes I do, I raise a hallelujah, do you see it? I will watch the darkness flee, oh I lift it up, I raise a hallelujah, in the middle of it all. In the middle of a mystery, oh yes, Lord, I raise a hallelujah. Somebody say this with confidence. Fear you lost your hold on me, so I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing in 
to your Savior tonight. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave you it all. And I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. I'll sing that again to him. Say, I'll stand for you, Lord. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave me all. And I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender. Is your 
Blessed Savior. All to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I surrender. Surrender all to your Savior tonight. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my. 
Sing it again, church. Worship him tonight. I surrender all. Yes, Lord. harmony in the house and I'm not just talking about musically <laughs> I said there is harmony in the house amen yeah. uh, musicians I know you you can identify with and connect with harmony but there's spiritual harmony yeah. right along with with your music that, that you're in harmony tonight in leading us in praise and worship praise be unto the name of the Lord and I believe that you came to church tonight dear because you came re- uh, uh, expecting I believe that Hallelujah. I feel a unity in the house of the Lord and a oneness in the house of the Lord. And that's a beautiful thing. I said, that is a lovely thing. Isn't that right in God? And I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord on Monday night. Amen. Uh, Just a privilege and honor to join with God's sons and God's daughters and, and God's people as we worship, as we praise, as we've come into the sanctuary on Monday night to give and to receive. Amen. You see, it works both ways. Isn't that right? We come to give of ourselves and to receive from the Lord. And you know what? That works out beautifully. Amen. Amen. I don't have to ask you if you love the Lord. I can look at you and tell you love the Lord. I can sense love in the house that you love God. And, and, and because you're here, it's, 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 it tells us something right there that you're in love with Jesus. Amen. That you're in love with the Lord. So that really tells us a whole lot because you are here. And I know that maybe some of you have worked today and, and you've been at school today and maybe a number of things, but you're here to, to to, um, to be blessed of the Lord and to hear from God. And I'm just going to let you be seated for a moment while I just uh, just want to go ahead and 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this, but it, and I, I just want to, well, I always want to be thankful to the Lord. That, that's the main thing, is to always give thanks to the Lord. Isn't that right? It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And uh, I am thankful to the Lord that he's allowed me one more year to come back here to um, Easton and, uh, and to be with you, to be with my Easton family. I, and that's how I consider it. That's how I feel about it. And uh, you're going to have to, you're just going to have to put up with that, whether you want, you're going to have to put up with me like that, it, whether you want to or not. <laughs> I'm a part of this church, a part of this family. I carry this church in my heart. You know, all the days that I'm away from here, I carry you in my heart because uh, I just want you to know that when I go in my prayer room, I, I always cover you. I always cover a uh, pastor and uh, and the leadership here and those who attend here and those who are members here, I always cover you in prayer. So you're in my heart wherever I go during the year after I leave from here. Uh, I, I think of you and pray for you. I thank you so much, Pastor. So I want to thank you once again for inviting me back. For the 12th year, I believe it's the 12th year now. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't get tired of coming, and I, I just uh, look forward uh, to it. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for making the arrangements again <laughs> uh, for, for uh, me to come and, uh, you know, dealing with Delta and, you know, all the stuff that goes with the airlines. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but the Lord and you, you got me here. Isn't that right? Once again, and the Lord worked that all out for us and showed us just, uh, you know, let us and, and what we were to do, and, and he just worked all that out. But I just thank you so much for your attendance. I thank you so much for your being here yesterday morning, last night. Can you see? Uh-huh. Can you see? <laughs> Do you see what I see? <laughs> Amen. Do you have eyes to see tonight? Amen. How, how many of you would say the Lord is uh, the Lord opened my eyes on uh, on on many things last night? Amen. And uh, do you have clearer vision? You have have your lens been changed since last night? Yes. Anyone? Yes, I see some amens. I see some hands going up. Well, just continue to walk in your 2020 vision, okay? Just continue to do that in, in this year of 2020. God has much more to show us and, and much more to do in our lives. I thank you for, again, your attendance, for your prayers. Thank you for your, um, your generosity, your giving, and, and support of uh, what the Lord has for me to do. When I leave from here, uh, then I go to Florida, you know, and then when I leave from there, then I go up to New York, you know, to, to New York. That's how we say that up there. <laughs> we go to New York and, um, you know, we um, you know, see what they're doing all the way up there. And I do hope we get some snow when the services are over. And that when I go up to New York, and uh, I say when the services are over, <laughs> that's how we would want that to happen. But anyway, I appreciate your prayers as we go, go on and continue to do the work of the Lord. Still remember me in your prayers as I remember you. You know, tonight, I just want to talk about when we make it about God and we make it about him, then that's the root of everything. And then when we just go ahead and make it about others, then that brings forth the fruit of everything. Can I say that again? When we make it about God, then that's the root of it all. Isn't that right? That's where it, it all gets started, right there. We're making, about, making it about him. And then when we begin to make it about others, then we will see the fruit of it all. Isn't that true? And I believe that this is something that we need to enter into, certainly enter into in this new year of 2020. We need to just say, you know what? I'm just going to get my mind off myself. Yeah, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get self out of the way. Is that okay? You know, for me to say it like that, maybe it's a little strong to say that, but I'm just going to tell you that it will work every time. 
If we just get our own self out of the way, our own opinions, our own thoughts about things, our own ways about things, and, and do, God, do it God's way, amen, that's going to be a blessing to somebody else. God says, and I want you to step back and watch me bless you. Praise the Lord. He said there are many ways that we can get blessings, but I'll tell you one of the main ways that we are blessed is when we are a blessing to someone else, and we can also bless the Lord. Isn't that interesting that we are able to bless the Lord? But when we, that way that we get the manifold blessings from God is when we begin to bless somebody else. Do, do you really believe that right there? And so I believe that I have the word of God to back me up on it because I want to read just from a few verses of Scripture and the first one is found, I'm not going to read like a whole text, or, but I'm going to uh, use three different scriptures, and then I will begin to preach the word of the Lord. And in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 17, it says, he who has pity on the poor does what? Lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Did, did, you, did anybody see that? Get, can anybody say amen to that? How many of you know that when we give, God will pay back? God is into paying, recompensing. He's into giving back. Isn't that right? Again, when we make it about him and we make it about others, then the Lord says, and I, I have the power to give back to you. And uh, so I want to uh, switch over to Luke, and we're very, very familiar with this scripture. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, can you just give me a little bit of the higher tones, not louder, but just a, a little bit of the treble because I'm pushing from my chest a little bit. And I don't need to be doing that. So, uh, so it says in the book in the, in the book of Luke, chapter six and verse thirty-eight. We're very familiar with this, aren't we? But we always think that this has to do with money. You know, and anybody wants to talk about you know finances or raising an offering or something, you know, they will pull up this scripture. But this scripture has a lot more meaning to it than just getting money. Because why? There are things in life that money cannot buy. Is that right? I said, there are many things that we need in our lives. There's just not enough money in the world to pay for it. Isn't that right? But, but here's what it says. It says, if we give, now this is a command actually, give and it will be given to you. Uh-huh. How? Good measure. Uh-huh. And how? Go ahead. Uh, keep on. C continue. Yes. And, and you see, and that's, again, that's not just talking about financial blessing. I mean, they, these are the blessings of God beyond measure. I'm talking about manifold blessings of God. Does anybody uh, know what I'm talking about there? We need that. But, yeah, but it tells us also in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 16, but do not forget to do good and to share. Mm. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. <laughs> there it is. I want to ask the question on Monday night. Do you want to please God? Do you really want to, can you say, I really want to be pleasing to the Lord. And one of the ways to please the Lord is when we reach out and we minister and we bless and we sow in the lives of somebody else. Do you believe that right now? Uh -huh. Have you ever experienced that? That when you have reached out and you have given, then the Lord has brought it back around. But we don't always know just how he's going to bring the blessing back around to us. And you know what? All I'm going to do is go ahead and be a blessing. As a matter of fact, he told Abraham, I'm already starting to preach, so uh, I'm just going to go on. He, he told Abraham, he said, in blessing, I am going to bless you. Is that right? I'm going to say it again. He said, Abraham, in blessing, I'm going to bless you. And so you're wondering, how do I get blessed? How do I get my prayers answered? How can I get a miracle from God? How can I see God work? And how can I see him move in my life? Well, I'm just going to tell you, we just need to start blessing somebody else. We just need to start lifting up somebody else. We just need to start encouraging someone else. Because I just want to say this, and I'm, not going, to, I'm going to say it strong, but not mean. It's really not all about you. 
<laughs> is that okay? Did I say that strong enough, even with a smile on my face still? I said, it's really not all about you. And God says, I'm just going to tell you something. If, you, if it's a whole lot less of you and a whole lot more of me, John the Baptist said, I can help you with that. He says that you, I must, what, decrease and he must increase. Isn't that right? Come on, raise your hands and say, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift up the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord. And the one of the ways I'm going to do that is I'm going to be a blessing to his people. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, and when you do that, I will start a whole cycle of blessing in your life. I will start a whole cycle of blessing in your family. Uh -huh. I will start a whole cycle of blessing in your personal life. I will start a whole cycle of blessing in your mental state, in your emotional state, in your physical state, in your financial state, in your relational state. Amen. He said, I'll cover everything. I'll have it all covered. He said, I dare you to bless somebody and watch me bless you. And I'm never going to let you outdo me. Is that right? Can I get a good amen right there? How I many of you know God says, I'm never going to let you out bless me. You'll never upstage me. Come on. He said, when you bless, I'm going to top, I'm going to top it. <laughs> uh, the more you bless, the more I'm going to bless. Hallelujah. And, and his blessings are inexhaustible. Oh, that's a good word. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I didn't even think of that. I said his blessings are inexhaustible. Isn't that right? He never runs out. Somebody say God never runs out. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody, I used to hear them say his coffers are full. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so say, Lord, I'm asking you for a blessing tonight. Go ahead, say it. Say it with me. Say, Lord, I'm asking you to bless me on Monday night. Uh -huh. I'm asking you to bless me in the year 2020. And you know what the Lord is saying? Okay, well, I'm be, I'll be more than glad to do that. I just want you to get your mind off yourself. And I just dare you to bless somebody else. I'm going to show you that how much of a smile that puts on my face. I want to tell you how much that pleases me when you begin to bless somebody else. Amen. Well, praise the name of the Lord. How many of you know there are many ways that we can bless. I said, there are many ways that we can bless. We all have our own, uh, a lot, our own personalities. We have our own giftings. We have our own talents. We have our own abilities. Isn't that right? And the Lord says, it is, let me put my hand on those things and use you to bless somebody. Because let me just tell you, so it is the will of God to bless you. God says, it is my will that you be blessed. I didn't come that you be harmed. I came that you would be blessed. Come on. Hallelujah. That you can walk around and say, I'm blessed in the city. Huh? And I'm blessed in the field. And I'm blessed when I come. And I'm blessed when I go. Oh, come on. Oh, hallelujah. I'm blessed when I lay down at night. I'm blessed when I rise in the morning. I'm blessed when I go out there throughout the day. Somebody say, I'm a blessed people. And some of you need to look like you're blessed. Come on. Some of you need to, uh oh, I'm gonna, my African American culture is going to come up. You better act like you know you're blessed. <laughs> come on. Oh. <laughs> I'm still pushing my, my, from my chest, and that's not something I usually have to do here, so I don't know what you're going to have to do to adjust that, but I'm still doing that. So come on. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying right now? Uh -huh. You better act like you know you're blessed. Uh, you better stop complaining. I said, you better stop mum murmuring and, and complaining because you're a blessed people. You were able to get up this morning. Uh, come on and get yourself and start God. Come on. And God started you on your way. Uh, sometimes when I first wake up, I set that alarm or my little Pomeranian will set the alarm for me. Uh huh. He'll tell me when to get up, you know, and sometimes it's earlier than I want to be up, but that's okay. The minute my eyes open and I get, I start getting out of that bed and I put my feet on that floor. I say, Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed because you took care of me during the night. I'm blessed because you kept me from all hurt, harm, and danger. I am blessed because you protected me when I went out and came back home. Come on. I'm blessed that I have food in my fridge. I'm blessed that I have clothes in my closet. I'm blessed that I have heat when it's cold. I'm blessed when I have AC when it's hot. Come on. 
Come on, just think of how blessed you are. Come on, just think of how blessed you are. I'm blessed that I have a car to drive that transports, uh, 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 transports me where I need to go. Come on, we are a blessed people. And you know what? Because we're blessed, we need to concentrate on being a blessing so that we can become even more blessed. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the name of the Lord. And you know what? I just want to talk about some people that really knew how to be a blessing. And God said, I'm not, and I'm not going to let you out bless me either. Uh-huh. You know, do you know that Mary and Martha knew how to bless I said, do you know that Mary and Martha, those sisters, knew how to bless? I mean, actually, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, you know, the, the little family, uh -huh, the little family, the two sisters and their brother. As a matter of fact, it is uh, believed by some Bible scholars that Mary and Martha and Lazarus were quite wealthy, you know. But that's not the only reason. But God had blessed them, and th you know what? And they weren't going to hoard their blessing. They were going to share their blessing. And I'll tell you who they shared their blessing with. They shared their blessing with Jesus, the son of the living God. As a matter of fact, they were not ashamed to ask him to come into their home. Come on. I said they were not ashamed to actually ask the son of the living God to come into their home. As a matter of fact, they even let him know that whenever you are in the area of Bethany, you are welcome in our house. There will always be a comfortable bed for you to sleep in. There will always be a, a place for you at our table. Isn't that right? We just want you to stop in and be refreshed. And we want you to stop in with your disciples and be renewed. We just want to offer you come on we've got something to give to you we've got something to give to you more than more important than money we've got hospitality to give to you Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, they were quite hospitable. As a matter of fact, Pastor, they were so hospitable that the word of God tells me that Jesus often went to their house. <laughs> uh huh. And the word is very clear. He says that Jesus loved them. He loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And it says, and he often went to their house uh, because they were bl they blessed him and they blessed those who were with him. Uh, isn't that right? You know, I can just see them now. You know, just kind of getting everything all put together and getting everything really nice. You know, for the Lord and and the Lord would come and they would have a great time of fellowship. But you know, Mary, Mary and Martha were doing pretty good, but Martha kind of got a little bit distracted. How many of you know the story? <laughs> I said she became uh, uh, a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, I've been told to call you big sister. So big sister, Martha kind of got, you know, a little distracted, you know. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and she was going along real good, you know, being a real blessing to the Savior, you know, being a real blessing, you know, to the disciples. And all of a sudden she gets distracted. Now she gets her mind off, uh, off of blessing and gets her mind on herself. Come on. What did I say? Get your mind off yourself. Isn't that right? Uh -huh. Because she was setting, uh, see, they were setting themselves up for a great miracle, setting themselves up for a great blessing that they didn't even know that they were going to receive. Is that right? Uh huh. And, and, uh, and so, you know, here's Martha now, and she starts complaining. And, you know, she went to Jesus and complained to him. I want to tell you, he's not the right person for you to complain to. <laughs> oh, you know, and, and she's, you know, she's got a little, she's got a little, a little pity party going, you know. And she's saying to Jesus now, you know what, Jesus now, you know, my sister Mary now, she's really not helping me around here. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, see, she gets her mind off the off. Uh, uh huh. She gets the, her mind off the master and gets her mind now on her mission. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Because now she's so busy with those things uh, that are more temporary, even though she was doing a good thing. Because she, but she gets her mind so much on what she's doing there, you know, and and tidying up everything and making sure everything is good. So now she's trying to find where her sister is. And she comes to find out that her sister is at the feet of Jesus. Is that right? And you know what? And when she tattletailed, <laughs> when she tattletailed on her sister, Jesus says, you know, oh, oh, no, I mean, I'm not going to say that he said it this way, but you know, girl, you need to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> 
Is that okay? <laughs> Girl, you know what? You need to go sit down somewhere because I just want you to know that your sister has chosen the better part here. You see, she has come and she is sitting at my feet because she wants to hear every word that proceeds out of my mouth. And you've gotten busy with, come on, things that really uh, are not as anywhere near as important as to what your sister Mary is doing. And we're going to have to watch that. Is that right? I said, we're going to have to really watch that because we'll start out right and we'll start out being a blessing and we'll start out giving and we'll start out sowing. And then what will happen is we'll get our minds on ourselves. Uh huh. Is that right? Uh, and Jesus says, no, you have got to, you've got to choose the better part. And when you do, there will be a tremendous blessing. You know what I believe, Pastor? I believe that Jesus just kept thinking, well, I'm, I know that he understood Martha was was kind of having a little problem right there. But I just want to tell you that later on in their lives, in their very lives, their brother, Lazarus, became very ill. Is that right? And we know the story. He didn't just become ill, but he died. Isn't that true? Now, they weren't thinking of any blessing that would come in any way because they were, you know, that they were extending that hospitality. They were using that gift of hospitality. They were being a blessing to Jesus and those with him. But you know what? Later on, when their brother got sick, you know what? They thought, oh, Jesus loves us. And how many times did he come to our home? How many times did he sleep in our bed there and rest? And how many times? did he sit at our table and I know that if we call on him he's just going to come immediately and he's just going to lay his hands on our brother he's just going to heal him and we're just going to go on and praise God Uh huh. but I just want to tell you it didn't happen that way I said it really didn't happen that way because when they called for Jesus we know that he stayed a few extra days where he was isn't that true he did not go right away for one thing he was ministering to his disciples and getting them prepared for ministry uh-huh and that's why he said in John 11 and verse 15 I'm glad for your sake that I was not there because you guys are going to have to learn how to believe and trust me is that right? Uh -huh. But how many of you know at the appointed time? How many of you know just at the right time? Uh, uh, he remembered their goodness. He remembered their kindness. He remembered their ministry to him. Isn't that right? And what does he do? He goes and he tells Lazarus to come out. Uh -huh. And you're going to look at me and say, that's not what he said. He said, come forth. What's the difference? He came out, didn't he? Uh, I said he came out, didn't he? And he came out alive. Is that right? And Jesus looked and said, loose him ah, and let him go. And let me just tell you something. Not only, not only was Lazarus raised from the dead, and not only did they get the blessing and the miracle of their brother being raised from the dead, but he, God, the Lord always takes the blessing even further because it says, and now many Jews believed in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You see, when we bless, the blessing is far reaching. Does anybody believe that right now? Somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody just say, I believe that. Yeah, uh -huh. they didn't know that while they were ministering and being a blessing, they were going to be recipients uh, of a tremendous miracle in the lives of their, in the life of their family. Do you believe that? See, you don't know how it's going to come back around. You don't know that little piece of bread you'll give, that meal you'll take, that card you'll send, that call you'll make. Come on. You don't know how that's going to come back around in your life when you need it the most. Does anybody believe that? Come on, say, I'm going to be a blessing in 2020. Come on, say, I'm going to get my mind off myself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be a blessing because I know that God has much blessing waiting for me. He has blessing waiting for this congregation. He has blessing waiting for this ministry. And if we'll be givers, come on. If we'll be sowers, come on. If we'll be blessers, uh, the Lord says, I will show myself mighty in your midst, amen, in ways that you would never know because I'm still able to do the exceedingly, the abundantly, above all that you would ask or think. And it's according to the power that is at work within each one of you. And he gives us power to be a blessing. 
Not to just hoard it for ourselves. Not to just enjoy and say, I'm so powerful or I'm so anointed. He said, I will empower you so that you can be a greater blessing to, to somebody else. Is that right? Amen. Well, I'm just going to move on now. I'm going to move on uh, uh, to... Um, uh, see, that was in Luke chapter 10, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go into Acts chapter 9 and, and see the little young lady that had the, she, oh, oh, she had a gift. I mean, she had a talent. She had a gift. As a matter of fact, she used it, and she sewed and made cloaks and, uh, cloaks and coats for the poor and the needy. Does anybody know who she was? She was just a little poor young lady that had a talent that was able to sew, but she went further. She not only sewed S-E-W-E-D, but she sewed S-O-W-E-D. She sewed her time. She sewed her talent. She looked and she saw that there were people in need. Come on, she didn't have her mind on herself. She looked around and saw that there were people in need. And she said, I know how to sew. So here's what I can do about that. I can make them coats and cloaks to keep them warm. Isn't that true? And we don't always understand God's way of doing things because he is sovereign. And I preached about that already yesterday morning. But you know what? That young lady by the name of Tabitha, and her Greek name is Dorcas. Is that right? What do we know about her? After sewing those coats and cloaks, boy, I would tell you that she probably would get up early in the morning. My imagination is going to run away with me. And she would get out her singer sewing machine. <laughs> Is that my imagination? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I just want to keep it real. Is that right? Yeah, got to, I mean, she's got to sell her thread and her sewing uh, materials, and she started to work. Is that right? But you know what? After a while, the young lady got sick, and after a while, she died. And all the people that she had blessed, the people that she had ministered to, they were in sorrow. They were in grief. They were so sad. Why has she been taken away from us so soon has anybody heard has everybody heard Tabitha has died she's not with us anymore have you heard about it but one said but one rose up come on but one rose up and said you know what how about that how about that little that little Pentecostal Jewish boy how about calling on him? Uh-huh, because what we've heard is that God has blessed uh, uh, others through him. Uh-huh, what we found out, that God blessed Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, at, come on, through this man by the name of Peter. And if we can go get him and bring him over here, perhaps God will do something. Oh, faith was arising. Come on, she had already, she had already uh, put, put her uh, blessing into the treasury. Oh, she was getting ready to, she was getting ready to uh, take out of the treasury a blessing here. Uh, even though she lay there dead, uh, she was getting ready to receive from the treasury of blessing. Does anybody know that God has treasury of blessing for every one of us? Come on, I said for you individually. I said for you collectively as a body of believers, you have got to believe that I said you have got to believe that he's got much in his treasure hallelujah for each one of us that would even dare be a blessing to somebody else but you know what when Peter got there when he got there all the mourners were crying brother Steve oh they were showing Peter the coats and the cloaks that she had made oh they were just they were just devastated but you know what Peter did he says here's what I'm gonna do here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna ask all of you to leave the room for a minute Okay, I'm just, I'm not being rude or anything, but I'm going to ask all of you to just go ahead and leave the room just for a minute because I've got to take care of business here. You see, my, my point in really even, even bringing that up or mentioning that is because Peter could have had the attitude that, oh, you called for me. Oh, I know why you called for me because I'm famous. Uh-huh. I know why you called for me because, you see, I'm on TBN and Daystar every day. Uh huh. I know why you called for me because it's like I'm so anointed. I've got oil dripping from my hands. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm just so anointed that I don't even have to go to church or pray anymore. You know, I've really got this. Uh huh. Is that right? That was not his attitude. How many of you know the Word of God? 
How many of you know that was not his attitude? He said, the only reason why I'm asking you to leave, because it's getting ready to be amazing in here. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. God is getting ready uh -huh, to give back. Uh, are you hearing me? Did anybody hear what I just said? God is getting ready to give back to this young lady that had given everything she had for somebody else. Is that right? Uh -huh. I don't think she took any time to sow anything for herself because she was so busy sowing for the poor and taking care of the needy. So uh, come on, extending her love to them. And, you know, God was getting ready to do something amazing in there. He put them out. He says, then I'm going to have to get a fresh touch from God before I pray here, before I put my hand on her. I'm going to have to get a fresh anointing because I'm going to throw this in there. We can't live off of the anointing from last week or last month or last year. Come on, we need a fresh touch from God. Is that right? How many of you say, I need a fresh touch? I got one yesterday morning. I got one last night, but I need another one tonight. Amen? Uh, I need a fresh touch from God. And the Bible says he knelt down and he prayed. And once he finished that prayer, he just said, Tabitha, here I go again. Get up. I know what you're going to say. I read in the Bible where it says arise. What's the difference? She got up, didn't she? That's right. Come on. I said she got up, didn't she? You know what the Lord said? The reason why I got her up is because I'm not finished with her designing clothes. I'm not finished with her clothes design. <laughs> I would imagine that once he got her up from that deathbed, that she made things that she had never even made before. The, and there was a greater blessing on her. Come on. I said there was a greater blessing. Come on. When God allows us to go through a difficult a place, hey, when he gets us back up from our situation, there's going to be greater blessing, greater power, greater anointing, greater faith. How many of you say that's what I want? And the more I give and the more I do, it's going to get greater. Hallelujah. He's going to do greater things. Is that right? How many of you know that Tabitha, Tabitha got up. He took her by the hand, raised her up, presented her to the mourners. Come on. And many believed in the Lord. Many, be oh, come on. Come on. What does it say? And they believed in the Lord. Isn't that right? As a matter of fact, in verse 35, I can prove something to you. Is that right, Pastor? in Acts chapter 9 and verse 35 it says all those come on yeah, yeah, yeah. prove it yeah. prove it all those in Lydda and Sharon turned to the Lord come on one girl that was a blessing to others Come on, God performed a miracle, bringing her back to life. And it says, all those in Lida and Sharon turn to the Lord. Just think of how it would be if we would be such a blessing to others and God would move so mightily that all those in Eastern Maryland would turn to the Lord. I mean, think about that just for a moment. Think about that just for a moment. Can I get a good response from you on that one right there? Come on, do you think that that is impossible with God? No, nothing is impossible with God. Is, isn't that right? But I like that, verse 35. It says, and all those in Lida and Sharon turned to the Lord. Well, hey, while she was sowing, she wasn't thinking anything about dying. She wasn't thinking anything about being raised from the dead. Are you hearing me? But she sowed and God honored it and blessed her and blessed those around her. Oh, somebody help me right there. You know what, Luke, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to stay with you on this. Uh -huh. What am I talking about? Being a blessing. Uh -huh. And you're going to get a blessing. Can I prophesy to you? Uh -huh. I'm, not going, I'm not going to be a prophet liar anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. Can I, 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 listen, I'm telling you, if you will be a blessing, you are going to be blessed. That's it. Amen. I can speak that over you. That I can speak over you. Because first of all, I was not the originator of that word. God is the originator of that word. He's the one that said that. He is the one that said that. And so let me stay here with you, Luke, in, in, in Acts chapter 10. Because this centurion said, you know, I've got the means. This military guy said, I've got the means. 
you know, I, I, you know, I really respect God and I honor God. Oh, you got it up there for me too about Lida and Sharon. I like that. Uh -huh. I respect God. I honor God. And, and the centurion, the Roman centurion, that military guy, he, he, didn't get, he didn't know Jesus right then, but he knew who God was. Is that right? Is that right? And where are you Bible scholars at? I said he didn't have that relationship with Jesus yet. Come on. But he did respect and honor God the Father. And the Bible says he prayed to God every day. Not only did he just pray, but he put his prayers to work because he gave gifts and alms. What? He gave to the poor. He blessed the poor. Come on. And the needy. Is that right? He, he got busy doing what we should be doing. Uh -huh. not, not fussing and feuding in church and not getting along with one another and quitting church today and uh, coming back next month and all that. Come on, we've got work to do. We've got blessing to do. We've got ministry to do. And, and guess what? And when we do it, God says, I'll reward you for it. See, that's the good part about it. When we do, he'll reward us for it. And uh -huh. so, you know, the centurion, he could have said, you know, I'm a big time military man. I don't have any time for these poor people. Come on. I don't have time to waste on these poor people around here. Is that right? Aren't you, are you, we ought to be glad when poor people come in this house. Come on. You, don't, you better not say you don't have time for them. God says, and you say you don't have time for the poor and needy. God's going to say, I don't have any time for you either. Is that right? Uh-huh. But I'm going to try not to be mean on the last night. But anyhow... Yeah, but, but, you know, he could have had that attitude, the big-time military man. Is that right? No, uh -uh. he was taking care of the poor and the needy. And, you know, while he was doing that, you know, while he was doing that, he wasn't thinking anything about how he was going to get blessed. He wasn't thinking anything about how that was going to come back to him. He just kept, you know, taking care, kept doing the good thing, kept being generous, kept being kind to those who were in need. And guess what? God sees everything we do. And not only that, but he keeps a record and he doesn't have to sit down at his computer and boot up the computer and bring up your record. Come on. He knows exactly everything we do. Come on, good or bad. And I want, oh, I, I, I don't want him to be counting the bad things. I want him to uh, uh, be mindful of all the good things, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, and he will take care of it too. He will. And so, you know, while the centurion, while he was just busy taking care of the poor and needy, Peter, oh, Peter, you, you know, they, they, they wanted you again. Uh -huh. They were after you again, Peter, uh -huh. because you had Jesus in you. You had the power of God in you, you little Pentecostal Jewish boy. You, uh, come on, God says, I'll use you. I will use you in any way that I want to, anywhere I want to use you. And they said, uh, you know, when Peter said, you know, I was just up on the roof. I was just minding my own business, you know. I mean, as a matter of fact, I was doing the right thing. I was actually praying. Come on, it doesn't get any better than that, right? He said, I'm up on the rooftop there. I'm up there. I'm up there praying. And all of a sudden, this big white sheet comes down out of the sky and has all these four-footed, uh, creeping, uh, uh, crawling uh, creatures in it. And he says, and then this voice came and said, Peter, I need for you to slay and eat. And he's like, who are you talking to? Uh, I know you're talking. I know you're not talking to me because you see, I'm a little Jewish boy, and I and nothing. That, I'm not touching anything unclean now. Uh huh. And and you know the voice came again, and the voice even came the third time, and the pet said, "Peter, slay and eat." <laughs> come on. And before he knew it, people had come after him. I'm I'm not telling every detail, but they came after him. They came in, they came to get him. Uh -huh. because God has sent them to get him. Is that right? Took him back to the military man's house. Peter walks in there. Oh, my. Peter walks in there. He says, I show, I, I see that God is not a racist. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody say amen. Uh -huh. I see that God shows no partiality. And you know what? Under the unction and power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, that boy began to preach like a man from another world in that centurion's Gentile 
house. Everybody following me? This Jewish boy is in a Gentile house right. preaching the gospel. Is that right? Sowing, giving, what God had given to him. But you see, he's not the only one that was sowing and giving. Cornelius had already sown and prepared the, the ground, oh, prepared the place for the blessing. Somebody say, oh, that's the way it works. He had already, because he had taken care of the poor, he had taken care of the needy, and God says that I'm very impressed by the way you took care of my people. So I have laid my hand on you and your family, your Gentile family, to be the first Gentiles to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost with a, come on, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now, here's, what, here's the point I want to make. Please don't miss this point right here. You see, the blessing came to Cornelius because of his obedience, because of his generosity, because of his giving. Is that right? The blessing, but oh, I want to tell you, the blessing didn't just come on him, but the blessing of the Holy Spirit came on everyone that was in his house. I need an amen from you on that one. Can I get an amen from anybody in this section on that one? Thank you. Can I get it over here? Amen. How about over there? How about all the way over? Come on. Can I, uh, uh, can I get an amen from people back here? Yeah, is that right? I said, when we are a blessing and then God begins to bless us, he will bless those who are near us. Do you believe that? Come on, your family will uh, be recipients of the blessing because you're blessed. Is that right? Because everyone that was in his house, his family, the friends, the neighbors, is that right? Everyone that was in his house uh, received the gospel at, that he preached, and they were all filled. The Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. The first Gentiles to, be, to receive the power of Almighty God. Why? One military man says, I'll feed the poor. Oh, my. Oh, I feel this. I said, I feel this. So what are you going to do? 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 He said, God, I'm waiting for you to bless me. He said, I'm waiting for you to bless somebody. Amen. Come on. I'm waiting for you to answer my prayer. He said, and I'm waiting on you. Yeah. See, we always think, God, I'm waiting on you. He says, no, I'm waiting for you. I can do it without it, but this is the way I designed it. In blessing, I will bless you. That's the way that goes. Is that right? You know what, there was another man, in my imagination, I'm going to tell the story like I want to. There was another man uh, by the name, and, and this is in Philippians chapter 2. There was another man by the name of Epaphroditus. I kind of like that name. I don't, I don't know if I would have named my kid that, but I really do. <laughs> I kind of like that name. His name was Epaphroditus. And, and, and pastor, I'm going to tell it like I want to. You know, he, you know, he and his wife probably, you know, you know, maybe they were just kind of laying in bed, you know, before they went to sleep. And, you know, maybe they were having a little pillow talk, you know, like you guys do sometimes. Is that right? Is that what you do? Well, you married folks, you, you, I guess you don't talk. Okay, maybe you don't talk. Okay. <laughs> maybe you don't talk then. <laughs> but anyway, uh, maybe they were having a little pillow talk. And, you know, all of a sudden, Epaphroditus might have said to his wife, uh, to Mrs. Epaphroditus, you know, probably said, you know, like I call her Mrs. Steve, you know, um, uh, Mrs. Epaphroditus. You know what I was thinking? I, I, I'm, really, I'm really feeling led to do this. I, I'm really feeling that I should be a blessing to the Apostle Paul. I really think that I, I, I really think I need to be a blessing to, to, to the apostle, to the man of God. And, oh, yeah, well, what do you have in mind? Well, I'm thinking that maybe I need to go on the road with him. Uh-huh. Maybe I, I, I just might need to get, a, you know, just kind of put everything else aside and maybe go on the road with him and minister to him while he's ministering. Refresh him while he's ministering. Take care of him. Come on. Yeah, are you hearing? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm thinking that maybe I, 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 I'm just feeling I really should do this. I should really minister to the man of God. How many of you know the man of God needs ministering to as well? 
How many of you know the woman of God needs ministering too as well? Uh-huh. And you know what? These two, they, they, uh, they loan their husbands to me when I come. <laughs> My armor bearers. Raise your hand, armor bearers, so everybody will know who you are. Uh-huh. Over there and over here. Uh-huh. See, they let me borrow him for the few days that I'm, uh, borrow them for the a few days that I'm here because they minister to me. You see, they do. They know how to. They're wonderful Christian gentlemen. Uh-huh. And if I didn't think they were, I would jack them up and get somebody else. <laughs> I caught you laughing at me. <laughs> I caught you. Uh-huh. I would tell pastor, uh-uh, no, no. You, 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 listen, I've had to do that. I, I don't have anybody that travels with me, and I don't want it that way. But, you know, when they assign somebody, I have gone places, and they've assigned somebody. I said to pastor, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, this is not working. Uh, are you hearing me? They are not ministering to me. They're getting on my last nerve. And that, that's what they're doing. They're getting on my last nerve. They're not in the flow with what's going on around here, you know. Uh, but, but you see, Epaphroditus felt led of the Lord, I'm sure, to go and minister to the Apostle Paul. Now, her, now my imagine, see, I'm going to just kind of tell it my way. This is not something you can read. But, you know, his wife might have said, are you kidding me? You, you, better, you better stay yourself home here and take care of me and these kids. What are you talking about going on some road with some apostle? Are you crazy? <laughs> uh -huh. As he's in New Jersey, are you crazy? Uh huh. Are you out of your mind? You know, you better stay here and get stuff taken care of at home. But you know, I don't believe that at all. I actually believe that she said, you know what? You just go ahead. You just go ahead and minister to the man of God. I believe that God's got it. He'll take care of us. I believe that everything will be all right. And how many of you know that in the story that he goes out on the road with the apostle, with the man of God, and the Bible says he ministered to him, it often refreshed him, he took good care of Paul. Come on, isn't that right? But while he was out working for the Lord and taking care of the man of God, he gets sick. Is that right? And, you know, Paul is saying, you know what? We're finished with this assignment. I'm sending him back to you, the Philippian church. I'm sending him back to you now. And I know that you heard that he was very ill. And please don't miss this. He said he was very, very ill on the road, ministering to me and taking care of me. But God. Can I get an amen from the church? Uh, uh, can I get an amen on the fact that there's a but God? Come on, I said there's a but God blessing. Come on, the devil would have taken you out, but God. God the devil would have killed you, but God. God, would, come on, you would have lost your mind, but God. Come on. I said, I'm feeling that right there. <coughs> Excuse me. I said, but God, here's what Paul said. He ministered to me. He got very ill. And Paul said he almost died. Oh, my, almost. But God had mercy on him and me. Uh -huh. You see, when she sent him out, when she said, you can go, she didn't know how she would get him back. Nope. Come on. That's right. But the Lord said, you blessed my servant, and so I give you the blessing yes. of healing. Oh, my. Come on. Uh -huh. You blessed my man of God, so I'm giving you the blessing of healing. Uh-huh. I know God heals even, he heals in other ways. But I've seen, have I proven to you that he also heals? People receive blessings and miracles of healing after they minister to somebody else? Is that right? Come on. Is it worth it to give? Is it worth it to get your mind off yourself? Is it worth it to be a blessing to somebody else? Come on, listen, ask them. You know, ask them, was it worth them being, ask Mary and Martha. Come on, ask Cornelius. See, because when the, because when, when, when the, when the angel spoke to Cornelius, yeah, he said, Cornelius, 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Here's what he said. He said, Cornelius, I'm going back to the centurion right here. He said, Corn Cornelius, God <laughs> has seen what you have done. Mm -hmm. Is that right? He said, Uh huh. God has seen. Is that right? Yeah, you're, uh, uh, you're giving of alms and, give, and taking care of the poor. And it has come up as a memorial before him. How many of you, what you do for somebody else will come up before God? So you don't do it for the pastor. You do what you do for God and his people. Is that right? And he'll return the blessing. To, uh, to you, is that true? Amen. Is that true? Amen. You know, I, I, need to, I need to go into the Old Testament just for a few minutes here. How many of you need, how many of you need God to move miraculously? Amen. How many of you really need for God to move miraculously tonight? You know, my faith is like raised up here because, you see, I'm reading these. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the accounts of what has happened, you know, in Scripture. And nothing has changed. God still does this. He still sees what we do, and he says, you know, I'm not going to let this go unblessed. I'm not going to let what you've done go unrewarded. I'm a bestower. I'm not a taker. I'm a giver, not a withholder. Come on. He says, no good thing will I hold withhold from them that walk uprightly. Blessed is the man that trusts in me. Isn't that what he says? Isn't that what he says? But, you know, I'm going to go into the Old Testament. You know, Ruth, where did you come in on this anyhow? Sister Ruthie, where'd you get, how'd you get in on this story? You know, I talk to the Bible characters. I guess you've noticed that this time around. I talk to them. You know, Miss Ruth, and, and you even have a book in the Bible with your name on it. Now, how did you get to do that? I want to know how you got that. And got that honor. I want to know how you got that blessing. See, because first of all, this is what I know about you, Ruth, that you are, were a Moabite. Uh-huh. A whole group of people that hated God. <laughs> against God. An enemy of God's people. Uh, the Moabites. That's who you were. But you know, Naomi and her sons... And, um, and this is in the book of Ruth. Naomi and her sons and her husband, they had to go into Moab because there was a famine in Bethlehem. Anybody know the story? Uh-huh. There was a famine in Bethlehem. So they had to go. Isn't it interesting that God will bless you even in enemy territory? I said, isn't that something? I'm going to say, oh, I got a good amen on that. I believe I'm, I want another amen. I'm going to say that again. God will bless you even in enemy territory. Even though they had to flee their home, Bethlehem, and go in their enemy territory to survive, God was still there to bless them. Is that right? But we know that, you know, uh, 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 that Naomi and her husband and her two sons went to Moab, and, and you know, her, 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 uh, her two sons, boy, they got to looking at those Moabite women. Uh-huh. Uh, and they fell in love with those Moabite women, which they should never be doing. Is that right? And they even went as far as to marry those enemy, you know, of God women. Yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then, the sons, then the sons died. You know, do we understand all this? No. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry for coughing. But anyway, but the sons died, you know. And, and, uh, and even her husband dies. Naomi's husband even dies. And she goes to, to Moab full. And then she's coming out empty because her sons and her husband are gone now. So the ones that are standing by her are the two Moabite sisters. Ruth and Orpah. Not Oprah. Orpah. <laughs> Is that right? And... Uh, 
You know, and she's saying, oh, I, I, the famine, I heard the famine is over, so I can go on back home now. I can just go on back to Bethlehem now. And so I just would like for you girls to come with me. And, you know, sure, I would just love for that. You just come on and just go right back with me, you know. And then I'm thinking, she probably thought to herself, no, that's not right. I should not be asking them that. That is really selfish. Right? See, what I'm doing is I'm thinking of myself right here. That's the problem with most people. Too much thinking of yourself. Isn't that right? So, so then she changed. <coughs> excuse me. Give me some water, please. <coughs> My throat is dry. Okay. Thank you. And so now she changes her tune up a little bit. Is that right? She said, oh, no, no, that, that was really not, that was not nice of me to ask you to leave your home and everything. You just stay here, you girls, and, you know, what you need to do is just go ahead and, you know, find husbands and, you know, have sons, have children, and uh, everything will be all right, you know. So, you know what, Orpah says, Orpah says, I'm staying. Ruth says, I'm going. Let me tell you something. The minute she said that, she opened the way for her blessing. Come on. Oh, yeah. She had no idea what she was saying when she said, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you for where oh, it, it's going to get heavy here now oh yeah oh yeah it's, it, it's going to get real here now she says entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you for wherever you go I'm going to go uh-huh uh-huh wherever you die listen to her Listen to this enemy of God. Wherever you die, mother-in-law, I'll tell you, the girl had to be a sure giver, boy, to want to go with her mother-in-law. She was a sure giver that wanted to cling, and the Bible says she cling to her mother-in-law. Is that right? Uh-huh. She said, where you die, I will die. She said, where your people, right, somebody give me an amen right here because I'm going to get excited right here because she said, and your people are going to be my people. And you, here's, here's where the blessing came. And your God is going to be my God. Oh my. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. I got to say that again, Pastor. She said, your people will be my people and your God is going to be my God. And that girl was setting herself up for the blessing of her life, even though she didn't even know what she was really saying. But her words had power and God heard her and God honored her because when she went back to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, Naomi, she immediately went in the barley field and began to glean. Come on, somebody help me. She began to, oh yeah, she began to work in the field. Somebody help me preach this. She began to take care of her mother-in-law. She made sure her mother-in-law was fed. She made sure her mother-in-law was provided for. And while she was doing that, she wasn't out in the field. I'm excited telling this story because you see, she wasn't out there looking for the guys in the field she was just taking care of the the elderly woman the woman come on are you hearing me she was honoring her her mother-in-law she was being a blessing to her and while she was doing that to, ah how many of you know god said it's my turn to bless now it's my turn to reward you you've taken care of this elderly woman and that is close to my heart and he's going to say to you tonight if you want to know what pure religion is I'm telling you, when you take care of the widow and you take care of the orphan, that is going to cause me to pour out blessings that you'll not even be able to receive. Somebody shout, yes. You take care of somebody else. Come on. You assist somebody else. You minister to somebody else. You put a smile on somebody else's face. You lift up somebody else. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Come on. You help somebody else. God said, I'm about ready to help you. But it's going to be in ways that you would never imagine or dream of. Oh, hallelujah. God says, and when I get ready, when I get ready to return the blessing, what I'll do is I will roll in the owner of the field. Somebody shout yes. 
Uh huh. I said, he said, I- I'm not even, I'm not going to just bring anybody to you. I'm bringing you the best. Is that right? <coughs> Excuse me. I am bringing you the best. And so what I'm doing is I am rolling in here uh, the owner of the field. I mean, when the owner of the field gets in there, you know, he sees this person, you know, just working, just minding her own business, taking care of her mother-in-law, you know. And so he asked the question. He said, now, who is that? Who's that one right there? Come on. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and, and you know what? They started telling him, this is Ruth. You know, she's from Moab. And, you know, and, and her husband died there. And she's come back with, her, with Naomi, her mother-in-law. And she's been taking care and blessing her mother-in-law and providing for her. And he's like, whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by that. I'm impressed by that. But I want to tell you, he might have been impressed, but God was more impressed. Isn't that right? And you know what? I believe that he was smitten right there. I believe that it was love at first sight. His whole attitude was, you know what? I've got to marry her. She's got character. She's got character. Uh, she, uh, she knows how to show mercy. She knows how to take care. That's the kind of woman I want to marry. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, but he said there's a law. Oh, these laws. Uh, oh, these laws, they can tend to get in the way. But there is a law. There is another kinsman redeemer that's closer, and that person would have first uh, a choice of having her, and I'm going to have to go to that kinsman redeemer, and I'm going to have to tell him uh, all about her and where she's come from. Uh, oh, my. And that, uh, and that she's attached to the land and, and, you know, the whole story. So he gets over there. By the, the to the kinsman redeemer and tells the story about Ruth and says, now you have first choice. You, in other words, you're the one that's supposed to, under the law, to marry her. Hey, the kinsman redeemer says, I'm fine. I guess Boaz said yes. <laughs> She's mine. Come on. She's mine. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, the girl was getting ready. Oh, my, my, my. The girl was getting ready. See, she had no thoughts while she was gleaning in that field. She had no thoughts of what was going to happen to her. But you know what? God says, it's what I think. <laughs> it's not what anybody else thinks. It's what I think of you. Is that right? And what happened? What happened? She marries Boaz. Oh, my. Uh huh. And she and Boaz get married, and she gets pregnant, and she has Obed. Uh huh. And then Obed gets married, his wife gets pregnant, and they have Jesse. Somebody help me preach. Uh huh. And then they get Jesse gets married, and she gets pregnant, and they have David. Ah. Uh huh. Somebody praise the Lord, uh, the King of Israel. I said the King of Israel. God's choice of the King of Israel. How did that? Moabite, come on, idol worshiper, hating woman of God. How did she get to be the great, great grandmother of King David? Come on. (laughs) And you give and you be a blessing. People say, how did she get to be that blessing? How did she get to be blessed like that? How did she get? See, you don't know what they've given. Come on. You don't know what that person was willing to do for somebody else. You know, I've even had that. I'm not going to talk about myself long because my time is gone. But let me just tell you something. People have said a lot of things, you know, even in recent years about, you know, about how did Jackie Smith get to be. And I'm not, I'm not bragging about this because a lot of pain went with it, too. A lot of tears went with it. But I'm just saying, you know, they said, well, how did Jackie Smith get to be, you know, the most well-known woman in the church of God to do what no other woman has been able to do in the church of God? Come on, and I'm not boasting about that. I'm really not, because there's nothing to brag on but God, but the Lord. 
Is that right? But people will sometimes, you know, oh, see, they don't, they, they don't know what you've given. They don't know. See, when the Lord told me, I want you to come off your job. I want you to give up your minister of music position. I want you to live by faith. I don't want you to get married. I don't want you to give birth to a baby. I don't want you. Come on, are you hearing me? My desire for you is to live by faith and to serve me and serve my people. I, my, my will for you is to preach the gospel around this world. <laughs> Excuse me. My will for you is to break through racial and cultural barriers and gender barriers. And come on. And when I've gone to churches over the years in the early 80s, and they would call me the N-word in the church of God. They would threaten me in the church of God. They would walk out on me in the church of God. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? This was 40 years ago when they weren't accepting people to worship together. They weren't accepting that God called a woman to preach. Come on, let alone a tan-skinned one in a southern white church. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? But you know what? I told the Lord, I give you my life. You sang it tonight. I surrender all. I give you my life. And I just want to tell you something. The Lord has kept record of that. And the Lord has blessed my life. Are you hearing me? I said, the Lord has blessed me beyond measure. God has taken care of me in ways that there was no way. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yes, and, 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 yeah, and when, the, when, when, the, when the church of God later on appointed me, and people said, how did she get that appointment? They don't know because, because I was willing to give. I was willing to give, and, and God says, I'm not going to let you give without me returning the blessing to you. Oh, come on. The many nights that I would cry myself to sleep in my hotel room, People would hurt my feelings. A young lady coming up to me at 15 years old saying, you, you know, and called me the N-word. You don't have souls. You can't be saved. All of you ends are dirt under our, white, our, our feet. Come on. You see, but I kept giving. But I kept giving. By the grace of God, I kept giving. Not by Jackie, but by the grace of God, I kept giving. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I kept giving. Come on. Are you hearing me? I kept blessing others. I kept giving and, 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 and giving up the things that the Lord asked me to give up. And then the Lord opened the door for me to be the first woman to preach in the General Assembly for our denomination years, la years later. Yeah, then the Lord opened the door year before last for me to, uh, this is all God's doing and it's marvelous in my eyes. Yeah, and, and then year before last, the Church of God, this same denomination that, that just wanted to lynch me, <coughs> uh, appointed, uh, uh, inducted me into the Hall of Prophets. Would, uh, come on. Are you hearing me? God says, yeah, you gave, and, this, and I've returned the blessing to you. Yeah, the person that says, yeah, uh, 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 this is a home for you to live in, and and we will take care, we will take care of you in this home. You see what I'm saying? When I said in my later years, how am I gonna how how am I gonna make it? Who's gonna be there for me? I have no parents. I have no husband. I have no children. Who's gonna be there for me, Lord? He said me. That's right. He said me. And I'm very well taken care of. Come on, are you hearing me? I know the blessing of giving, of giving, of giving. I know the blessing of giving. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you would say right now, there's things I really need for God to do in 2020 in my life. Come on, let's be honest with it. Let's be honest about it. Some things I really need for you to do. And the Lord is coming to you right now, one by one, name by name, and saying, what are you willing to give? Now, now I've, I've been preaching on giving. Have I mentioned money? Let me ask you, have I mentioned money? No. Oh, 
I want to know if you're willing to give your all. I want to know what you're willing to let go of. And come on, I want to know that. That's what the Lord says on this night, on this night, on this night. Do you have your eyes open? Did he open your eyes last night? Uh Uh-huh. Come on. Is he your refuge and strength? Is he a well-proved blesser? Is he a well-proven blessing? Uh, Is he? Did I preach that yesterday morning? Well-proved. Is that right? Well, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? Uh huh. Say, I'm going to, I, I, Lord, I'm going to give. I want you to make a commitment. And if you're going to do that, I'm just going to ask those individuals that will say that, I want you to stand where you are. I want you to stand where, uh huh. Say, I want to be like Mary and Martha. Uh huh. Say, I want to be like Epaphroditus. Yeah. I want to be like Ruth. I want to be like the centurion. Uh huh. Uh huh. Are you willing to give? What, what, are you willing to give? Come on, come on, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Come on, stay with me right here. This is a serious moment for you. The Lord says this is going to be a turning point in your life for 2020. And I am not even just saying that. He's saying this is a turning point time in your life tonight. Tonight. This, tonight is going to determine what you'll receive in this new year. Do you hear him speaking? Do you hear him speaking? This, tonight, what I've preached to you and given you many examples of the blessing that came back to these people. Why? Why? Because they made it about somebody else. Is that all right? Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that all right right now? Tell me that's all right. Come on, tell me. Say, Jackie, Mama Jackie, (laughs) Sister Jackie. Come on, whatever. Say, that's all right. Come on, that's all right. Is anybody believing God to do anything? Are you believing God to do anything at all? Are you wanting him to do anything at all for you? Are you needing for him to do anything at all for you? Well, he said, tonight is the turning point. Tonight is the tur- What are you willing to do for somebody else? Come on. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do to be a blessing? What are you willing to do? Think about it. Think about it. Come on, don't, don't go bobo on me here. <laughs> Come on, think about it. What are you willing to do to be a blessing to somebody else? Uh huh. See, the Shulamite woman, and, and, and I am finished preaching, but for my altar service, the Shulamite woman, what, what, what'd she tell her husband? This is a man of God. We have got to minister to him. We have just got to minister to this prophet when he comes around. Well, what do you have in mind? Well, well we can build a room in the wall of our home here. We can just make a place for him when he comes through. What we can do is just put a nice bed in there and a lamp and a table and a chair. And then we can go get some groceries and make sure that they have some food and they're refreshed. Well, that's your idea, so let's do it. Uh Uh-huh. Let's do it. Let's get, he was in agreement with her. Let's do it. And let me just tell you something. That family, I'm not going to preach this because there's a whole lot of preaching in there, but that family got a triple miracle for being a blessing to the prophet. Second like Kings chapter 4. You can read about it. 
they were a blessing to the man of God. And let me tell you, she was barren and she had a child. <laughs> Is that right? Had a child, the child died. And God raised him back to life. Come on. And then in this case, there was another famine and they had to leave. But when they came back, she got her house, her land. Come on, what was the other blessing? God says, I'm so impressed by what you did for my servant that I'm going to give you a triple blessing. And everything that the land yielded. How many of you would say right now, I'm believing for a miracle and a blessing in my life and in the life of my family and in the life of this church and in the life of this ministry. Are you expecting God to do anything here? Come on. Uh, the miraculous, uh, the supernatural. Is that right? Uh-huh. To fulfill the, the prophecy that was given over this house. Yes. Yes? Is that right? Yes. I want you to come with your faith right now. I want you to come with your faith. Come on, I want you to come with your faith then. I want you to come with your faith then. Come on, come on, come with your faith then. Come with your faith. Come with your faith. Uh -huh. Come with your faith. Do you want to see people saved in this house? You want to see people delivered in this house? Uh huh. See people healed in this house? Come on, right now, right now, right now. Come on, come on. Oh, hallelujah. Look, look, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not begging people to come. Look at this, look at this, look at this. This is a beautiful sight right here. This is a beautiful sight. What do you have to give? What do you have to give? What is it that you have to give? What is it that you have that you're willing to give? What do you have that you're willing to give? Come on, what do you have that you're willing to give? You know what I was so blessed about? Um, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this just because, you know, she's connected with the pastor. But you know what I was so blessed about yesterday? Twelve years old. Twelve years old. Saying today that, and of course she's being taught. She's being taught correctly. Twelve years old. Tomorrow we're going to be fasting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, twelve years old. Uh-huh. Is fasting giving? You better believe it is. You better believe it is because you have a purpose for it. For God to be able to, to, uh, to uh, pour out blessings. Is that right? Is that right? What are we willing to give? This child is willing to give up something for God to move. Is that right? Is that right? It would put most adults to shame. Is that right? But I'm just talking about giving in so many different ways, haven't I? I haven't just chosen that one way, but that's just one example that a 12-year-old is willing to give up something, to give something in order for God to move. How about that? How about that? How about that? You know, I'm making contact with you, asking you that. How about that? How about that, people of God? Say, God, you can have everything. You can have it all, God. You can have it all. The Lord says that there are many things that I'm waiting to give to you. There's blessing that has your name on it in glory and i'm ready to release it yes. when you're ready yes. to give Jesus. come on right now hallelujah 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 thank you lord thank you lord come on get uh-huh get ready this, this is a pivotal moment this is a pivotal moment
through the storm. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Cover me, peace of God, peace of God, cover me. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Through the storm, cover me. Only in you, only in you I am saved. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Only in you I'm secure. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Only in you I find peace. Oh yes, yes, hallelujah. So cover me. Oh, cover me. come on, sing that. Come on, come on, say that, say that. Only in you I am saved. Come on, say that. Only in you I'm secure. Only in you I find peace. So cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover me yes. when it all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes yeah, all yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, come on, come on. Cover me. Say that. Me when Say I'm that. Not strong. Say that. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when it all seems hopeless. Yeah. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole Sick message in this. Oh, yeah, there's a whole message in this. Come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Cover me, cover me. Yeah, come on, come on. Come on, we need a covering of his spirit. Cover me, cover me. Yeah, yes, come on, come on, come on. Cover me, cover me. Cover me, cover me. Oh, yeah, come on, come on. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I yes, am Yes, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes. Cover me when it all seems hopeless. Cover me. My faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I yeah. understand. Cover me, cover me when I am hurting. I, I think cover you mean me this. When I'm not strong. Cover yeah, me yeah, when yeah, I yeah, 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 seems hopeless cover me when my faith is gone let the peace that passes all yes, I understand yes. cover me when I am hurting Sing. cover me when I'm, I'm not, not strong, strong. Yeah, 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 cover yeah. me when I am going through the 
is gone let the peace that passes all I understand cover me when I am hurting cover me when I'm not strong cover me when I am going through the storm cover me when it all seems hopeless cover me is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand cover me. If you would, if you would, turn me up a little bit so I can keep my voice, please. If, if you would make two, line, make two lines so I can come down the middle. Uh -huh. Some back up, and, and that's right, and some stand here. Come on, so I can come down the middle, so I can come down the middle. Some back up, come on, some back up, some in the front, some in the back. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And those in the front, I want you to turn to me. I want you to turn to me. Uh-huh. It, it, hallelujah just just keep just keep worship just keep worshiping just get as many as you can get and in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name yes uh, you know what I, I don't know that song but that's a, that's a great song for right now because that's really what we need we need God's covering over us we need God's covering over us come on we need that covering of his blessing covering of his spirit uh, the covering of love the covering of compassion the covering of come on the covering of love the covering of compassion are you hearing what I'm saying is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight the covering is that just hang in here with me because I never know the direction that the Lord is going to go in for the altar service I never want to I never want to predict it I never want to know what well, well this is what God's going to do but I'm feeling this very very strong I'm feeling it very strong God we need for you to cover us with more love for others and more compassion for others and uh, come on hallelujah come on hallelujah and for mercy for others glory be unto God uh, come on I need for you to come here and believe God with me uh, that I will not it will not be about me any longer that it's going to be about others oh God uh, but I need your covering on me first uh, so that I can reach out to others oh God uh, and cover them with your love uh, and cover them with your mercy and cover them with your goodness and cover them with compassion come on are you hearing right now in the name of the Lord come on Lord I'm sorry that I've just been so selfish I'm sorry that I've made it so much about me I'm so sorry oh God that all the attention has gone on me myself and I and Lord I've not really uh, uh, thought about how I could bless others and you know what then Lord, I will be assured uh, that you will bless me in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name oh Lord I'm so sorry uh, that I have just been so self-centered uh, I have been so self-centered uh, I have been so uh, come on all about me God have mercy have mercy Oh, hallelujah. Cover us, oh Lord, with your love and compassion, Lord. Lord, that we must care for others. God, we must give of ourselves. God, we must reach out, oh God. Lord, we must make the sacrifices for somebody else's need in the name of Jesus. And God said, I will take care of you. I will take care of you. I will take care of you. Of you. I will take good care of you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Follow me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, and I bless you. Come on. 
Let's just go in deep tonight. We've got to go deep in our compassion. We've got to go deep in our love. We've got to go deep in our care for others. Come on, we've got to go deep. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, for our family members, even for our enemies, even those that have hurt us. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. God is doing something deep in here right now. He's doing something. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you came back. Seems hopeless. Cover oh, me yeah, when my it, faith yeah, oh, is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. He is. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me. All seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when it all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when it all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. So cover me, oh Lord. Cover me, cover me. Cover me, cover me. Glory. Cover me, cover me. Cover me, cover me. Oh Lord, cover me. Cover me, cover me. Cover me, cover me, cover me when I am hurting, cover me when I'm not strong, cover me when I am going through the storm, cover me when it all seems hopeless, cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when it all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith. 
that passes all I understand. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me when it all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is gone. Let the peace that passes all I understand. Cover me when I am hurting. Cover me when I'm not strong. Cover me when I am going through the storm. Cover me seems hopeless cover me when my faith is gone let the peace that passes all I understand cover me oh Lord cover me cover me Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me.
strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power, your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be. It's your power. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. And I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. And I will be free. Oh, yes, I will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, God. Tell him yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Go yes. To Jesus yes. Now. yes. Tell the Lord yes. Go Tell the Lord to yes. Jesus Tell him now. yes, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I'm holding nothing back. Tell God yes. I'm I will. I will. I will. Back. All to I Jesus will. now. I will. All to I Jesus will. now. I will. All to Jesus now. Yay. I'm so Broken gracefully, I'm strong hey. when I am weak. Yeah. I will be free. Come on, come on. Your power at work in me. Yeah. I'm broken gracefully. Yeah, come I'm on. strong when I am weak. I will be free. Yeah. Your power at work in me. That's it. Work through I'm me. Broken work through me. Work through me. Work through me. I will be free. Your power at work in me. Work through me. Broken grace for me. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Work through me. Come on. Come on, tell him, work through me. Come on, let me hear you say it. Say, work through me. Come on, work through me. Work through me. God said, I can do it without you. But my design is to work through you. Tell him, work through me. Yeah, me. I give you permission, God, to work through me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. Come on. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm 
broken, gracefully. Yeah. Yeah. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken, yeah. gracefully. Yeah. Yeah. I'm strong when I am weak. Yeah. I will be free. Yes. Your power yeah. at work in me. Broken gracefully, yeah, I'm strong when I am weak. Yeah. I will be free. Oh, oh yes. I am Somebody free. tell the Lord yes. I said, Somebody tell the Lord yes. Use me. Use me. Somebody needs you. Use me. Hallelujah. Yeah. I will give of my talent. I will give of my ability. I will give of what you've given me. And God said, and yeah, and I will turn around and give to you what I have for you. Amen. 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 Come on, I want you to just say, work through me. Say it like you mean it. Work through me. Work through me. Amen. Do you believe that right now? Uh, raise your hand. Say, Holy Ghost. Uh, power from on high. Mighty power from on high. Flow through me right now. Holy Ghost, flow through me right now. Come on, come on, come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come on, go ahead. Tell him. Tell him the third person. Tell him. Flow through me right now. Right now. Mando ho yarabashta He says tonight I say it again is a pivotal night What are you going to do with this night What are you going to do to be like Mary and Martha or Epaphroditus or Cornelius or Ruth or any of them that I spoke about. What are you going to do? God says, when you do, then I will do. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. So what are you going to do? What are you willing to give? What are you willing to share with someone else? I'm telling you the mark of a good sower and giver as someone that's willing to solve somebody else's problem. That's the mark of a, of a sower, a giver, a person that's always willing to help solve somebody else's problem. That's what we need a church full of. That's what we need these days. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Amen. Work through me. That's key right there. Is that right? Is that what you're wanting? Come and tell me, Lord, I can't do it without you, though. I can't do it without your spirit and flowing in my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Work in my life right now. Take care of whatever it needs to be taken care of my life right now at this altar. I don't need to take anything I brought in here. There shouldn't be. I don't need. I, I need to. I need to. 
go out, go out of this sanctuary without it. Leave it here. Anything that's going to hinder me from being able to give my all for someone else. I've been changed. Healed. Go ahead and worship. I've been free. Delivered. Go ahead, and go ahead. I found joy and peace. Grace and favor right now. And I have waited for this moment to come and I won't let it pass me by oh, I won't go back I can't go back to tonight I say 
Hallelujah. Do you have that testimony tonight? Hallelujah. Can't go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessing flows. Hallelujah. Blessing flows in this house. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, triune God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, we've got blessing to we we've we've got blessing to, to do. <laughs> Is that right? Amen. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. Say, I've been saved. <laughs> I'm changed. And if you've not been, get your hand up and say, I need to be saved and changed in this place. Healed. I need to be delivered. Just get your hand up if that is you. If you're still walking in darkness, if you're still in bondage, I want to tell you there's a son and who is a son of God that will make you free and you will be free indeed unreservedly amen hallelujah so what are you going to do this year so what are you going to do this year be a blessing I hear you I hear you what are you going to do yeah change your lens that's good what else are we going to do? Because when you have your lens changed, you'll see where there's need for you to be a blessing. You're going to be blessed by God, and then you're going to be a blessing because you're blessed by God. That's right. So that's what he said. I'm, I'm not blessing you for you to just have the blessing. I'm blessing you for you, you to be able to be a blessing. Isn't that right? Yeah, we need some more Apophroditus's around here, some more Mary's and Martha's and Lazarus's, and we need some more Cornelius's, and isn't that right? We need some more Ruthies, and these people blessed and were blessed. That's it. That's how it works. It sounds simple, but it's not always easy because we are humanly very selfish people. <laughs> that nature has to change. Isn't that right? And God says you'll be rewarded for it. You will be blessed for it. Well, bless the Lord. Just about 930, uh, 9.27. Let's just go ahead and praise the Lord for three minutes. <laughs> Come on, glory to God. I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He reminds you, I am your well-proven help. <laughs> your well-proven help. Is that right? Amen. I'm going to expect to hear about great blessing because you've been a blessing in this house. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to hearing about great blessings because you've been a blessing. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Praise the Lord. You got two minutes. Come on, you got two minutes. <laughs> you got two minutes. Hallelujah. You got two minutes. I got two minutes to love on the Lord. I got two minutes to praise him and love him. I got two minutes to thank him. Hallelujah. I got two minutes to magnify him and glorify him. Hallelujah. Lift him up on high. <laughs> what? What? Next one, I got to back out there and I'm going to get some more people in the spirit. Mm hmm. For what now? Oh, okay. Oh, well. And Jesus, and come on, we got, a, we got a couple minutes to pray for healing. We got, oh yeah, we got a couple of minutes. We, we have time to pray for divine healing. 
that has been provided for him in the atonement. Uh huh. By your stripes, Jesus. We speak healing over his back. In the name of uh, oh 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 hey my God my God you're a mighty healer you're still the God that heals let us bless the Lord wound dead every like being a blessing. I just feel like being a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just feel like being a blessing. Praise God. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Glory be unto God. God says, you don't have a clue as to what I have prepared for this new decade and year that I've blessed you to see. So they don't, they, you, you just don't know. Just one act of obedience, the Lord says, will open the windows of heaven for blessing in your life. Just one act of kindness. Just one bit of care for somebody else. He said, I will show you my power, my love and care. Bless God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. To God be the glory. Amen. Anybody just feel like giving the Lord praise for what He's been doing? Hallelujah. What He is doing. Will anybody give Him praise for what He's going to do? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a confirmation of these services. Our sister has been with us and the word of the Lord. What we've been hearing and bringing and preaching and sharing. We give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us allow ourselves to be stretched of how he wants to take us in for he will give us what we need. Thank the Lord for you being here and your obedience and for worshiping and receiving. I'm telling you, there's been miracles in this place. A lot of things the Lord allows us to know and see and experience. And all I can tell you is there's miracles going on and breakthroughs in this place. And chains have been broken. And God is doing an awesome work in our midst. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just continue to go forward and to know that He is worthy. There's times when we need to move beyond as we have experienced the Lord had me to share with you recently those breakthroughs that marks and anchors in my life. And that's what's been coming out in sermons. And I'm not going to reiterate them. You can go back and pull them out. But I just need you to know it's these type moments of obedience that God can do. This is what's going to reach our lost loved ones and bring them in. Whether you know where they're at or not, this is what's breaking... What is in this place doesn't remain here. It's moving down these streets right now. It's moving in these apartments around us right now. It's moving in your loved one's lives right now. What is happening in here? What we need to do is leave the stuff in here that needs to be left so God can release what needs to be released. Amen? Out there. And that's what makes all the difference. So to God be the glory. How many of you will continue to pray for Sister Jackie? Amen. Amen. She's a prophetess. She's an evangelist. I'm telling you. I know I call her sister because it's what I know her to be in my heart and my life. This sister, but God uses her mightily, and we give the Lord praise. And uh, I'm here to tell you, God knows what He's doing, and we are so thankful how He is ordering steps and uh, how the Lord has brought our steps together over these many years now. And we just give God thanks, giving Him what He has in store. Amen? All right. Well, you continue to seek, and you continue to reach out, and we're just going to continue. Be as receptive in the upcoming services as God has moved. You see, that's how God continues to move. If we'll continue to move in Him, in the upcoming services, He'll continue to flow in our midst. Amen. Keep this freedom. Keep this release. Amen. As we dismiss tonight, there's just a personal release. I just ask, invite you, if you would like, and I know she mentioned it several times in service. She didn't mention money. But there's times when the Lord touches my heart, and if you feel I've, I'm going to ask the ushers at the door, just on the way out. If you feel like you need to give it in that direction, because I know there's times when the Lord moves in many ways for us to give, and the Lord directs us in many ways. But if on your way out you feel like releasing, but then I've had a few that come in late, a couple of services, and we've been trying to take the offerings early in the service so we could just let the Lord move how He wants to through the service, but not to limit our giving. But if you have that opportunity and would like to do so, you have that opportunity and advantage as well on your way out. So with that being given, Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We know, Lord, that you are lifting and raising. And God, I'm thanking you that we know, Lord, that through you all things, all things, all things are possible now. I know what you're speaking. I know what you're releasing in us. Lord, and in your wisdom, through you, Father, that we would just be obedient. Father, and we would just let you continue to order those steps 
And God, for me, I come to do just that. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us again. Keep this in mind. The revival doesn't end on Monday night. It stays with us in our other services. Amen. Whether it's in our classrooms, whether it's in Wednesday night, whether it's Sunday, God bless you. You're dismissed.